So on these 10 days from the last days of the first retreat in the Catholic Church, just a few considerations. From Ascension Thursday, when our Lord went up into heaven and he gave the instruction to his apostles, he said, Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And he told them to go to teach all nations and then preach the gospel to every creature, St. Mark says. Preach the gospel to every single creature. And this instruction was given. But then our Lord went up into heaven. And then the angel came down and said, You men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up to heaven? And if go and get busy. Go and get busy. During the next nine days, the holy apostles did not go out and preach. They didn't go out and teach. They didn't go out and administer the sacraments of the faithful. But they gathered together in the upper room, and this is now the end of these nine days, uh, with the Blessed Virgin Mary in prayer. And they were waiting. 120 people, 120 men, and they were the 12 apostles, and they were waiting there, the whole of the Catholic Church, and our Lord was waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. Now there's a gap between Ascension Thursday, when our Lord went up into heaven, and he said, go out and preach the gospel. You are obliged to go out and preach the gospel. We are obliged to preach the gospel until the end of time. But before you can preach the gospel, the gospel must be inside the mind. The gospel must be inside the heart. It is my duty to preach to you the gospel as a priest of God, as a bishop of God, to preach to you the gospel. It's the duty of every priest to preach the gospel. But if the gospel is not in the mind and the heart, then it cannot be preached. And hence, our, our, the apostles, before they would go out to do their great work of preaching the faith, they spent nine days in prayer. Nine days. And these are the first novena of the church. We have a custom of novenas from this day on. So that the first novena was the Blessed Virgin Mary with the twelve apostles. Remember, St. Matthias was, was chosen right away. During these twelve, during these nine days, the first duty that St. Peter did on the Ascension Thursday, there are only eleven apostles. God made 12 apostles. Jesus Christ made 12 apostles. We cannot go out without 12 apostles. So that the church needs apostles, it needs bishops. The church needs priests. And we can't go out without bishops and priests. So we must first replace that apostle, who Judas, who went to his own place by committing suicide. And he went to his own place after he had betrayed God and did not repent. St. Peter betrayed God, but he repented. Judas betrayed God, but he did not repent. He went to his own place. So we must be replaced, and St. Peter decided there should be someone who had been with him during the whole three and a half years, who had heard the words that Christ taught, who had, who had, communicated, who had, who had seen his miracles, and who was also a witness. And so there were two good choices. One was Joseph, Barsabbas, and the other one was Matthias. They said, let God choose between these two men. He didn't say, let God choose between all men. But let God choose between these two men. For these two men meet the criteria of an apostle. They have been with us the last three and a half years since St. John's baptism. They have seen all the miracles. And they have heard and been witnesses of the resurrection and the, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection. Therefore, they will be like us, witnesses. And then they drew lots, and the lot fell to St. Matthias who took the place of the twelfth apostle. That was the only activity that happened in the last ten days. St. Matthias has now been an apostle chosen by God through St. Through Peter and a lot. The other eleven apostles were chosen directly by Jesus Christ himself. This apostle was chosen and he is counted amongst all twelve. He's the same as the other eleven. He did take the place of Judas and God allowed him to be chosen as an apostle. Hence we did from that day forward we notice that the apostleship continues in the church. It was a custom until the 1950s that whenever we have the mass of a saint, like St. Pius X, or any pope that was a saint, he is a descendant of the apostles. And therefore, we have the preface of the apostle. So that when, saint, when any pope saint, he is a true descendant of the apostles. Bishops are also descendants of the apostles. In fact, priests are also descendants of the apostles, but especially the bishops and the Holy Father in Rome. And we pray that the apostles... That there must be apostles. During these nine days, what happened? God prepared in a final preparation his apostles. And they were prepared by being with the Blessed Virgin Mary in prayer. And then they were found to be with the Blessed Virgin in prayer. And they were found at nine o'clock in the morning to be at the place where they were supposed to be on Pentecost Sunday. And then the twelve tongues of fire descended upon their heads. And the thirteenth tongue came down upon the head of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
And saint, the, the saints tell us the Blessed Virgin Mary, she always has this tongue of fire over her head. So it didn't really descend over her head. It was just simply made visible. It was because the Holy Ghost is always with her. She's always espoused the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost descended upon the twelve and descended with a tongue of fire on their heads that they might be filled with the Holy Ghost and go out and preach the gospel. And this is to remind the priest of God that it is our duty to preach the gospel. There must be priests to preach the gospel, but they do not preach the gospel if they don't pray. They don't preach the gospel if they're not in the Blessed Virgin Mary, united with the Blessed Virgin Mary in prayer. If they are not in the cynical in the upper room, if they don't have a time of preparation, hence the church has always prepared priests. You don't just ordain a priest and send him into the battlefield. You can ordain the little baptized boy a priest, but one should not do that. One should wait until one is prepared, and then they're ordained and sent to the battlefield. So this is a time to pray for the priests. We'll go here. A time to pray for the priests of the church, because the church depends on the priests. There must be priests for the church to continue. And these nine days are most important because they are during these nine days, the priests were prepared to be able to go out and give the gospel to every nation. And so they did on the 10th day when the Holy Ghost ascended at 9 o'clock in the morning. And we'll close the night. God bless you all. It's very late here. God bless you all then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.